What's going on guys? So I am still here at the open house in Rockport, Texas. This is Camper Clinic's annual open house. Looking at some of the fifth wheels. I'm trying to spend some time in grand design units to showcase what those models look like. In front of me we have the 311 BHS. This is a bunkhouse fifth wheel. This is a reflection series, which is their slightly less expensive, slightly lighter weight and lower profile unit. Let's take a closer look at this one. First of all, let's start by taking a look at the numbers. So this one has a gross vehicle weight rating of 13,995 pounds, has a cargo capacity of 2,441 pounds. It rides on 16 inch E-load rated tires. This does not have an upgraded pin box, but it does have the thicker baggage doors. This is not a drop frame, so the frame will kind of intrude into this front storage area a little bit, but it still has a reasonable amount of storage here. Aluminum steps on this model. It does have the ground control electric auto leveling system. Rides on a 10 inch I-beam frame. Again, no drop frame, so it's a solid 10 inch I-beam frame. Rack and pinion slide over here. Has twin awnings, one for the front section and one coming off of the slide back here. Taking a look back here, it's gonna have Westlake E-rated tires and the Dexter Easy Flex suspension system. It's kind of interesting because that Easy Flex suspension system comes on lower cost fifth wheels and very expensive ones. Back on this side, it's gonna have a huge outside kitchen area. So this is all gonna lift up. Check that out. This is a huge space, has the thicker baggage door has a not so micro refrigerator back here. Storage up there, kind of high off the ground, cabinetry. Has a nice countertop here, nice sink, and a cooktop that pulls out. So that's very nice. Coming around the back, LED lighting. It's wired for a Furion backup camera. Has the ability to tow a small trailer, something behind you because it has your trailer light connection right there. Rack and pinion slide over here as well. On this side, rack and pinion slide here, and the front bedroom slide is a Schwintec. And again, a Schwintec slide over here. Not having an upgraded pin box isn't necessarily a bad thing. It means you have the option to throw your own pin box on without having to pay for a higher price one when you buy it. Let's take a look inside of this Reflection 311 BHS. I like the fact that this one does have a friction hinge door on it, so the door is not just going to slam on you. Climbing up the steps, looking towards the back here. This is a really cool floor plan. So this is a mid-kitchen floor plan. Nice countertop space, nice cabinetry. You can see it has a propane electric refrigerator. It has a booth dinette style, so you can drop this down and sleep in it. Entertainment seats over here that points right at the TV, so that's really nice. You have good vantage to view the TV from just about any angle. Has a nice large pantry right here, plus a nice higher end cooktop as well as oven. Full size residential refrigerator. The trimming looks really nice in this unit. Nice lighting. Now back here, you have your bunkhouse. So this is a bunkhouse unit. Behind it, you have more storage. Scooting over here. You have a bathroom off to your right. It's a reasonable sized bathroom, definitely good enough for kids. You have an upper bunk here, lower bunk here that folds out into a bed. Plus you have a bunk on top of this area. Behind this area is your outside kitchen. Nice ladder, more storage, everything back here. Again, they trim it off really nicely. This area is really cool. It kind of reminds me of my chaparral, except the sink's not here. It's here in the island. But it is a good-sized kitchen. They give you a tremendous amount of countertop space, cabinets, and drawers to store things. This one has an MSRP of 65.4. They're asking 59.8. Going up the stairs, you can see the bathroom area has another entrance into the bedroom. You have a nice small sink area here, which I like. I don't like larger basin sinks, so this, to me, makes sense. Lots of countertop space, of course your porcelain toilet. You have about maybe a foot and a half of space here. It would have been probably a little better had they angled the toilet slightly to point in this direction. Nice shower. I'm going to imagine you probably have about six foot three inches of space. 
You have some nice cabinetry over here for storage, wardrobe, and it's pretty deep because this is all in the slide versus the bed being in the slide. And that permits them to do kind of this kind of strange design here. Going into the bedroom, you can see the queen size bed. Got a lot of room on this side. Got some more space right here. And then you also have probably a good 12 inches of space on this side. It steps up a little bit though. Overall, this is a pretty nice layout. Definitely a relatively smaller unit for a larger family. So you could easily sleep quite a few people in here. You can do two on the bed, two more right here. So that's four. I don't really think people can sleep on the recliners unless they really want to. Five, six, seven, maybe even eight, because that's a large bunk, and then nine. So you could sleep roughly nine people in this unit. Very nice. I do like the floor plan. I like the floor covering. They do have carpet in the master bedroom up front, and it kind of transitions over. I like the refrigerator. I'd probably opt for a slightly narrower residential style. It would free up some space over here. Let's take a look inside the pantry. So it's definitely got a good size pantry. And again, I really like the cooktop area here and this space right here. But yeah, it's nice that everything kind of points in the direction of the TV so you don't have to worry about kind of craning your neck unless you're sitting in this space. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is definitely a nice unit. I would recommend probably a one-ton single rear-wheel truck to pull something like this. You could even get away with a three-quarter ton truck, perhaps even with a gas engine, if you equip everything correctly and you make sure you have the right specs. This isn't that heavy of a unit, definitely not what I would consider half-ton towable. However, it's one that you don't have to go to a dually to tow something like this. Of course, with fifth wheels, I prefer it just because it does add a level of stability that single rear wheel trucks may not have. But overall, I don't think it's absolutely required for a fifth wheel in this size. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.